I also asked you how many moles of carbon there was in one mole of methane. Well, that should be even simpler. The starting units there are moles of carbon, and the target units, uh, the starting units were moles of methane, and the target units were moles of carbon. Well, then we can use the equivalency one mole of methane to one mole of carbon. So then we get a very boring and unexciting calculation of one times one divided by one would be one. So we can see that one mole of methane has one mole of carbon. Again, that should be so obvious that it shouldn't really be necessary to write this out on paper. This should be so clear we don't need to write this out on paper, but we should be able to write it out uh, if we need to to kind of formalize our work. So, so, there's some, so what we're seeing here then, so I guess what we're saying is this is what's called, by the way, a molecular formula. This is called the molecular formula for methane. So what we're seeing is that the molecular formulas have conversion ratios inside of them. Molecular formulas give you conversion ratios. These are the types of conversion ratios that you can get out of a molecular formula. You can convert between moles of the molecule and moles of the atom. So that's the kind of conversion ratio you get. Molecular formulas give you equivalencies that allow you to convert between moles of molecules and moles of atoms. In particular, the subscripts in the molecular formula give you the numbers that you need for these conversions. So um, let's say we've got our one mole of methane here. Um, so we saw that the one mole of methane was the same as four moles of hydrogen. That's the same as four grams of hydrogen. Um, let's figure out how many atoms of hydrogen that is. How can we do that? That's something we probably have to work out on paper. What are our starting units here? Let's see. Now, actually, remember that, that we had four moles of hydrogen. Now, actually, um, it looks like now you're converting from grams to mole. But we don't actually have to do that. We already know how many moles of hydrogen we have. How many moles of hydrogen do we have? So we don't need to convert into moles of hydrogen because we already worked that out. Now, what are our target units? So let's try doing this conversion. That's right. So that would tell us the total number of atoms. So this would be about 24 times 10 to the 25, 23rd atoms, or 2.4 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. So actually, we didn't want to convert from grams to atoms. It was easier to convert from moles to atoms, because we have a conversion between moles and atoms, not between grams and atoms. <laughs> 